Uh, good afternoon. Am I audible? Okay. Uh, just for all, I am Dr. Pavan Murthy. I am from the WHO Country Office, India. I am presenting on behalf of CRO. Of course, one of my colleagues was supposed to come. Uh, he did not come due to some emergency. So I am presenting on behalf of uh, CRO region. Uh, so basically, to continue uh, where we saw this uh, uh, particular slide, and uh, I just focus on the CRO uh, region, and uh, you can see that uh, there are two countries, basically India and Bangladesh, uh, which are uh, uh, having active uh, outbreaks, uh, epidemics of uh, cholera uh, within the CRO uh, region. And uh, if you see the latest uh, situation between uh, active outbreaks and preparedness, uh, you can see there's a lot of cross-border uh, movement uh, between Myanmar, Nepal, Bangladesh, and India. So the preparedness of uh, Nepal and Myanmar is also uh, going on uh, simultaneously. And uh, you can see that uh, India and Bangladesh are uh, listed uh, in the active outbreak uh, uh, region. Now coming to uh, some background uh, of uh, cholera in the Southeast Asia region, uh, as you all know, uh, it is endemic for cholera. And uh, the past history, how cholera got introduced uh, to the uh, global is also through uh, some of the CRO countries, including India. So India introduced cholera to some of the other countries. And to mention that India is uh, got a high population density. Now it is 1.4 billion. And as per the UN projection, uh, we will overtake uh, China in June of uh, this year. So China population will go down and India will go up. So that is the situation. It is highly uh, populated. Uh, and then, of course, uh, uh, cholera is still underreported, uh, underestimated. And uh, in the recent years, uh, especially in uh, uh, 22, 21, we have seen some increasing number of outbreaks uh, of cholera, uh, especially in uh, Bangladesh and uh, India. So that is the increasing active outbreaks. There is also some estimated burden of uh, cholera in CRO, which was uh, done. And uh, from the studies, uh, we know that at least uh, 500,000 to 700,000 uh, cholera cases. Uh, of course, uh, it is labeled as uh, acute watery diarrhea, but this is not reported uh, officially. And as per the uh, studies, 10 to 30 percent of the diarrhea cases uh, in Bangladesh and India uh, could be uh, due to cholera. Uh, and substantial number of cases uh, are also missed uh, as stool cultures are also uh, inadequate. IEDCR Bangladesh estimated uh, 450,000 hospitalized cholera cases. Uh, including about 4,500 deaths uh, in the country uh, annually. So the existing surveillance uh, objectives and modalities, uh, there are four. Uh, we look at early warning and response. Uh, we look at uh, monitoring trends, burden estimation, and uh, monitoring the impact of uh, interventions. And how uh, the detection takes place is basically a health facility-based uh, surveillance. Uh, there are also event-based uh, surveillance, which are picked up uh, from the periphery and from other sources. And once the uh, signal is uh, there, uh, there is verification, uh, usually within 24 hours. Uh, RDT positive is reported. But however, RDT uh, is less used uh, in the countries. Uh, suspected cases are also reported for acute watery uh, diarrhea, acute gastroenteritis. 
the data collection, reporting, interpretation, uh, it varies. And uh, we also have uh, DHIS2, uh, especially in Bangladesh. Uh, in India, of course, uh, it has been transitioned to a real-time uh, information system since uh, April 21, wherein there's an integrated health uh, information platform, which actually transmits real-time data from uh, village level to district, state, and uh, national level. There are 33 plus disease conditions and uh, acute watery diarrhea is one of the syndromes and uh, tested for cholera and lab confirmed cholera cases are uh, reported uh, in the system. Interpretation of uh, routine data is mostly at the province and uh, national level. Now, if you come to the surveillance uh, outcomes uh, and the dissemination, uh, we do have uh, dashboards. Uh, there are disease uh, bulletins. Uh, like you see the Nepal one uh, on the right side, there are disease bulletins. Uh, there are some in which there are restricted access. Uh, so it is not fully in the public domain. Uh, some of the uses uh, of this uh, dashboards uh, and out outcome dissemination is uh, burden estimation, uh, some hotspots uh, identification, uh, some of the evidence that is uh, done helps us in the risk assessments uh, and uh, after action reviews, and some of the policy and program uh, planning. And, and what you see here is some of the burden hotspots uh, studies. Uh, we also have some dash, uh, some analytics from uh, India where you can drill down from state to district to village level. And uh, of course, cases are spot mapped, time, place, person. You also have trend lines, uh, you have age breakup and pathogen uh, breakup uh, within the uh, portal system. Now, at the regional level, what uh, exactly happens is the uh, health emergencies HIM team, uh, they detect outbreak uh, and analyze data at the regional level. So they coordinate with the WHO country offices to monitor the outbreaks and collect the data from the country office. So there are 11 uh, country offices in the CRO region. And uh, regional data is published weekly uh, for internal use. Uh, so this is internal use. But if you want to uh, get hold of the weekly bulletin, a special request can be sent uh, to the WHE team and they will put you on the mailing list. So that is the other thing. Then uh, HQ, Country, of, country offices also collect data on the annual cholera report, and there's a weekly epidemiological record, uh, which you see on the right side. So there are a number of disease in the weekly records, including, uh, of course, the latest uh, monkeypox, COVID, diphtheria, but cholera, there is one section, which is every week, there is an update uh, in the cholera side. Uh, for the regional office, uh, the WHO Collaborating Center is uh, uh, NICED in Kolkata, which is uh, National Institute of Co Cholera and Enteric Diseases. It compiles the burden uh, in the region based on the published uh, reports and India's uh, situation. This is just to show you the last report of uh, uh, weekly report of 20 to 26 April. And in this, definitely what we saw, uh, what uh, was presented earlier, uh, the suspected and cultured cholera cases is uh, described in detail, uh, the number of cases and the uh, displaced population of uh, Myanmar nationals and how the cases actually went up, the suspected and the confirmed cases. And as, as of week 16, how it has actually uh, declined. Uh, as we also saw, uh, there are definitely uh, outbreaks are there in Bangladesh. We saw a huge outbreak in Dhaka. There are other outbreaks happening uh, in the Bangladesh uh, main uh, areas. 
which were reported earlier. Now, coming to India, of course, uh, no data was uh, shown, but just to show you that uh, since uh, uh, 22, uh, we are closely monitoring the positive cholera cases, of course, not the acute watery diarrhea cases, which are in large number, but those that were culture positive and PCR, uh, you could see that definitely uh, uh, we are seeing the cholera cases across uh, uh, on a weekly basis, uh, which went up in week uh, 32 of uh, 20, year 22, and then it slowly declined. And in the year 23, uh, we are also seeing a low level of uh, cholera cases, but we are watching uh, closely for uh, huge outbreaks uh, that could happen. Uh, just to show you a glimpse of the map, this is in 22, and you could see the western part of uh, uh, India where uh, cases are higher. And this is a range of 1 to 135, which is the dark, uh, dark brown. And you can see that in states of uh, Gujarat and Maharashtra, where cases of cholera were uh, highly picked up uh, during uh, the year 2022. And in 2023, of course, we are also seeing uh, some states like uh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, uh, but the level is low. It is between one to seven. So seven is the dark brown uh, cases. Some of the stakeholders uh, in the cholera surveillance uh, of course, uh, we have a lot of uh, urban uh, munis municipal agencies and uh, the departments of uh, public health uh, engineering. There is a Ministry of Environment in which we collaborate. Uh, of course, there is the WASH sector, uh, the Red Cross. Uh, we have international NGOs like the Water Aid, uh, which has been collaborating. And uh, other partners, including UNICEF, UNDP, UNRC, CDC, MSF, and ECHO uh, project. Uh, the WHO collaborating centers uh, and other uh, research institutions in academia, uh, example, the ICDDRB uh, and the NICEL. So these are some of the close uh, stakeholders uh, where we are uh, collaborating. The achievements uh, related to cholera surveillance, of course, uh, uh, in some places it's more sentinel and some places we are also having uh, community uh, surveillance, uh, but mostly through health facility uh, surveillance. Early alert, alert of outbreak is uh, generated and uh, there has been a regular reporting of acute uh, watery diarrhea. Uh, for which we are also closely monitoring uh, where the cholera cases are there and where there are the acute watery diarrhea cases around that. So the outbreaks are also uh, documented on the system. And, uh, and uh, uh, now the system for, say, like India is also paperless uh, outbreak system where the events are generated, the rapid response teams are uh, constituted, they are sent to the area, they document it, put it on the platform. And then, of course, there is a line listing and lab investigation is done. And uh, the, the outbreak is closed with senior officials overseeing the uh, outbreak. So this is also recorded uh, throughout the states and uh, districts uh, within India right now. The informed, uh, uh, the surveillance data and outcomes, they inform the policy and uh, programs. Uh, the multi-sectoral coordination, uh, community mobilization, and uh, vaccination. Uh, the informed recognition of cholera is definitely as priority for high threat pathogens for the region. It reflects in the regional uh, national proposed. This is the diagnostic and genomic sequencing uh, roadmap. So now it is uh, a very high priority we are also taking necessary steps to scale up uh, cholera uh, in the region. What are the key challenges? Uh, of course, the main challenge, uh, we also still, uh, still under reporting. Uh, only the lab confirmed cases uh, you see are reported uh, here. Uh, suspected cases among uh, acute watery diarrhea cases are recorded. 
uh, but not reported. Uh, the standard guidance for surveillance that includes the EWARDS uh, and the EBS, uh, including the community-based surveillance, uh, definitely need uh, strengthening. Uh, there are many uh, other issues like social, economic, uh, and political uh, disincentives, uh, money for capacity building, uh, uh, money for diagnostics, uh, etc. So these are some issues uh, definitely it, it varies from uh, state to state. The laboratory capacity for confirmatory diagnosis at the sub-national level uh, is also difficult to estimate the proportion of uh, acute watery diarrhea cases that may be due to uh, cholera. Uh, RDT's uh, availability is limited. Mostly uh, the use of culture and PCR is done and also some of the other uh, lab tests are also included. Uh, there is limited data analysis and interpretation capacity, especially at the uh, sub-national level. Once the, uh, say for India, where the platform uh, is now generating a lot of data, there is a lot of analytics, but who are the people to look at it? So that is a question which uh, we are seeing, and it's proposed to set up like an analytic uh, cell uh, in, the, in the national and uh, peripheral level to look at uh, closely the data. Uh, and interpret it for policy and decision uh, making. The other challenges include uh, multi-sectoral coordination. These are also WASH-related uh, uh, coordination, which is uh, very important. Uh, there is limited and unsystematic interaction and data sharing because the urban is totally autonomous body. They don't talk uh, with the state governments and other things. So the coordination between the urban and the other uh, departments of public health engineering uh, is especially important. Human resources and funding, there has always been a frequent uh, turnover of uh, human resources and vacancies, and that affects the uh, overall uh, surveillance system because we have to retrain uh, the people and then uh, bring them up to the level of uh, uh, the reporting that uh, we need for the surveillance limited funding to sustain some of the surveillance sites. And uh, it is a federal structure. So the national and the states are somewhat independent. Health is uh, you know, at the state level. Uh, so this varies from country to country. And uh, there is a variable subnational capacity uh, for implementation. So I stopped this, but I saw that there was uh, next steps. Uh, so I think the next steps definitely look at uh, some of the capacity building uh, for rapid response teams. Uh, definitely the laboratory diagnostics and capacity building is uh, needed. And the third point we looked at is an analytical cell, uh, which, which, which will help us to look at the data closely. And the fourth one is we are also trying to sync and see how the data can uh, get back as was requested by headquarters uh, through a backend uh, system. Thank you.